hi everyone. Welcome to Docs Teach for Virtual Learning, how to lead a Docs Teach activity remotely. This is our third webinar in our series. Uh, if you are new to Docs Teach or uh, this, this webinar series, I just want to point out a couple of resources where you can get started on our docsteach.org homepage. If you go to menu, uh, resources. We've got a link called Getting Started that will walk you through what this site is, what this site is, and everything it can do. You can also access previous webinar recordings under webinars, recorded webinars. So definitely check those resources out later. Now, my goal for today's session is to give you new ideas for how to use Docs Teach in a virtual class meeting. We know there are many web conferencing tools out there, so we'll try to stick to general recommendations that will hopefully work across many platforms today. Uh, on Docs Teach, we have 12 different activity tools that can be used for class discussions or student assignments. You can see the overview of those activity tools under activity tools, all tools. And uh, some of these tools, particularly the analyzing documents, the focusing on details series, uh, will work well in a virtual class discussion, especially when they're featuring images or, or posters. So I have a few, uh, activities that I've pulled together under my account, my activities that I want to share with you today, and walk through how you might be able to share these with your students. So we are going to start with uh, the whiteout blackout activity. So when we open this link, we are taken to the teacher page. Again, this has everything you need to share this activity with your students, including background information for you, additional resources, an overview of the activity. You can find it here. Now, with this uh, whiteout blackout activity, you can obscure information on a primary source so that students then need to use context clues to hypothesize what is happening or what is being described in the document. Uh, it's a really easy activity to put together and it'll help your students practice document analysis skills, use those context clues to form hypotheses and use primary sources as historical evidence. So in this uh, particular tool, students are going to examine a diagram of the bus in which Rosa Parks uh, took a seat. Uh, her name has been uh, obscured from this document and so they're gonna have to analyze the document, share what they observe to try to make a hypothesis about what story this record connects to. We're gonna go ahead and click Start Activity on this page. This takes us to the student URL. This is the page that you wanna share with your students to lead the activity. Now, if you're like me uh, and oftentimes have 20 tabs open or 20 windows open, you may want to open this uh, student page as a new window. Then when you share your screen, you can just share this window with the student docs teach activity and toggle back and forth between your shared window uh, and your web conferencing tool or your teacher notes using, uh, depending what system you're using, right, the alt tab key or, or the mission control key. Some uh, web conferencing systems, right, will allow you to share your screen while also having access to that chat function, those interactive tools. So whichever makes the most sense for the tool you're using. And then as you share your screen with your students, you can use this activity to ask your students questions, right? We have these discussion questions and prompts built into this activity. When you're done, has some wrap up questions that you can share with your students to, con to consider. And you can use these uh, discussion questions to guide your conversation with students around this primary source. There are a couple of ways you can have students share their responses, right? If your uh, tool has a chat function, you can just ask students to type their responses in and you can read them out loud as they come in. Or if you've got a hand raising tool, right? You could ask students to raise their hand if they wanna share their hypothesis about what document or what story this document connects to by asking students to raise their hand and calling on raised hands to unmute to share their responses. I've also seen it done where you can have students in the chat function chat their name and then you know who to call on to unmute. So there are a couple of different ways you can get students to share their ideas about what they're seeing in this document. But we've got a lot of, we've got a document here that we can really practice those, right, those visual analysis strategies, get students to take a look at what's happening here, 
form that hypothesis. And then we can click view entire document to see the document, the original document as is. So you can absolutely use this whiteout blackout tool to share in a, in a virtual class meeting, uh, visual uh, documents that are really, have a lot of visuals, photographs, posters could work really well. And again, to get to this student page, we started with the My Activity. You can find this activity by searching your activities. You can always start to find new activities in that activity search button from the home page. And when you find an activity, it first takes you to that teacher page. Again, this is all the information you need to facilitate this activity. In fact, you could even have the teacher page open as you share the student page on your screen to refer to. And clicking that start activity is what takes us to that student page, the page we're going to want to share uh, with our students as we leave this virtual discussion. Now, you could absolutely share a docs teach activity that uses textual documents. There are just a couple of modifications you might want to make. So for example, we're gonna look at this activity that I've already searched for and saved in my activities. That is uh, two versions of FDR's uh, infamy speech. So in this activity, students are comparing the changes between a draft of uh, FDR's December 8th speech and the final version. When we click start activity, we are taken to those two versions that we can toggle back and forth between. Since we are dealing with a lot more text, it may be helpful to take this unique student URL, share this directly in the chat for students to open as they analyze these documents and give some time for students to work their way through this text. Or prior to your virtual uh, meeting, you could share this student URL with your students in advance. And um, they could open this up walk through these discussion questions, jot down a couple of notes in advance of their class discussion. You can also, on the teacher version of the page here, if you scroll down to the bottom, you are always going to find links to the documents used in the activity. You could even share these links directly with students, whether it's via the chat or via you know, email or your LMS prior to the discussion. Students could open up these two documents to look at uh, and respond to during your virtual class discussion as you share the student activity page, which again, we can get to by from the teacher page, clicking start activity. When you share your screen, you're gonna wanna make sure you are sharing this window with your students because this walks through the student uh, act presentation of the activity. All right, so I'm gonna close a couple of these windows here. I'm walking through a couple more examples of how you could share a docs teach activity during a virtual class discussion. One other thing I wanna point out is that if you need uh, for any reason a PDF version of the activity to share with your students or want to share something with your students that they're able to print, or if you wanna print anything from the teacher page of the activity, you're going to wanna use that printer icon because this is going to open up a printer friendly version of your activity, which then you can then print the full student activity directly, or you could even save it as a PDF and then email that or share it with your students in another way. If it's going to be helpful to have access to something that is printable, you're gonna to wanna to print it from the teacher page versus the student page because this, because this printer icon is gonna give you access to that printer friendly version of the activity. All right, let's go back to my activities. I bookmarked another type of activity here that I wanna share that might work well uh, for a remote learning session. This is an activity that uses our interpreting data tool. So the interpreting data tool can be used in many different ways. In this particular activity, we are asking students to analyze a political cartoon and identify artistic techniques the artist is doing. And they're going to add little text bubbles to the cartoon uh, where they find these techniques in play. So again, I, if I was leading a virtual class session with my students through whichever distance learning platform you're using, first you're going to want to click start activity because this is our unique student, or this is our student URL. This is our student friendly version of this activity. Share your screen of the student activity so we can all look at this cartoon together. 
And then the activity has students think about these different artistic techniques and political cartoons and ask them to identify where they find these and explain why they're identifying, right, this personification, this, this particular symbol. And as they look at this activity, you could ask students to share which uh, symbols they are finding. And then you could add the text by clicking add text and typing in the identifier, right? The, the rifle is a symbol of you know, the uh, mobilization at the Polish border. Save that, that note is going to show up on the cartoon. You could also, if you are using a web conferencing tool that has an annotation feature, you could have students annotate this document with you, identifying these different artistic techniques. So whether they, they could raise their hand and you could call on um, volunteers to identify an artistic technique, but then also explain the why, what they think, how this art technique is being used. And then you can use these uh, when you're done questions to wrap up the class discussion with students responding uh, in the chat box or, or being called on to unmute and share their responses. So here we have just three examples of Docs Teach activities that are going to lend themselves well to a, a virtual class session that you can lead a conversation around by sharing your screen, showing this uh, student link and having students participate, whether it's through chat or unmuting their microphones uh, to, to respond and contribute to this conversation, whichever uh, classroom manage, virtual class, classroom management strategy or makes sense to you. Now, many of our activity tools, as we mentioned, especially the ones that use multiple primary sources may work best as assigned to students to complete uh, as an assignment. However, a couple of these might be useful to share your screen and do a review session of during an actual virtual session. So the next tool I wanted to spotlight to today of how you could use that is the Wayne the Evidence tool. So I'm going to open this Wayne the Evidence tool. We're looking at one that is going, students are going to analyze different documents and determine whether they show a separation of powers or the concept of shared powers. So in the Wayne the Evidence tool, students analyze different primary sources and place them on a scale uh, to show which interpretation they think the evidence supports. Now, with weighing the evidence, unlike uh, your finding a sequence or our finding a sequence tool or our seeing the big picture tool where there's going to be a set answer, students' answers may vary on where they've placed uh, these pieces of evidence on the scale. So this might be a good activity to share and conduct a review of after students have completed it, it in advance. So again, I'm going to click Start Activity to get to that student page. You could assign this as an assignment to your students by sharing this link at the top. Uh, if you are using Google Classroom, you can use the Google Classroom icon to set it up as an assignment. If you're using another LMS, just simply copy and paste the student's URL into that LMS to set up that assignment. As students analyze these documents, they can see the full version, assess the text, return to the activity, and determine if they are seeing separation of powers or shared powers are two interpretations in this activity and then actually load the scale. And then when they're done, they can, after they've analyzed all the documents, they can submit their answers to the wrap up question. And again, for students to submit their responses in Docs Teach, they would just type in their name. They would type in your email address associated with your account and then enter their response and submit this activity. Now, if your students are, if you're using an LMS, students don't need to type in your email address associated with your DocsTeach account. All they have to do is click send response. This generates a unique URL at the top here that they can submit using the Google Classroom link or copy and paste into your other LMS system. They can also bookmark this for reference during your class discussion. And we can see we've got how the student has answered uh, the this activity in the snapshot here. Going back, right, the next day during the class discussion, you can go ahead and click Start Activity, share this screen, 
and ask students to share how they inter where they place these documents on this scale. Uh, you could even create, as you look at the documents, a poll if this is a feature in your, your distance learning tool uh, and have students respond, whether it's interpretation one or interpretation two, as you look at each document, and then ask students to share make the case for why they place that document in that interpretation. And so this is a good way you could use this to, to get a review going, to get a healthy debate going, because not only are can these uh, primary sources be placed to support two different interpretations, students' responses to where they place them on the scale may also be different, which could lend itself well uh, to a healthy class discussion. So whether you are sharing a new activity for the first time with your students as a class discussion or using one of these tools uh, to review your students' work, there are a lot of ways you can incorporate a Docs Teach activity into your virtual class session this year. And the same, uh, these same techniques can also be used whether if you're projecting these activities uh, on a projector and sharing them to the class, you can use them in the classroom as well. So that, this is, again, just a handful of examples. We'd love to hear from you how you're using these tools this year. You can always reach out to us using the Contact Us button or uh, tell us how you're using Docs Teach on Twitter. We are at Docs Teach.